appreciate we've got a smaller room than perhaps we had earlier on, but please, if you are on a seat with one of these, keep hold of one of these. If you are not on one of these seats with one of these on, I'm going to pick on you later. So just to beware. Okay, so, and this session comes up with its own health risks and health warnings. All liability is with you. So, just to start, um, my um, talk is about participatory governance for a trustworthy information age. And I think any respectable governance, uh, a respectable conference on misinformation, disinformation, and fake news will be remiss without any reference to regulation, standards, and most importantly, governance. Now, the regulations are out there making their way across the globe from the UK to the US and Europe and beyond. And they're trying to govern the disparate impacts that we're seeing of this new platform economies around information. And there's a plethora of information out there. And some of the laws that have come out, the Digital Services Act, and some of the other laws that are in their way of making, are really honing in on the online harms, the content, and perhaps rightly so as well, because we can see the impacts that are disparate to our societies and our economies around us. And there's also standards, and there's a number of standards out there about well-being, human dignity, but also about how you moderate content, how you select that content, how AIS systems, that's algorithmic intelligence systems, and you hear me talk about that a lot, are being designed, developed, deployed for the very purpose of being used on these platform economies. And we heard some really fantastic stuff from Noah, so you're, you're all tooled up and geared up to know some of the kinds of algorithms that are used in these platform economies. And without, with all due respect to everything that's gone before, we are looking at an ecosystem approach here. So we're going to need education of people who are going to be the end users of these um, algorithmic intelligence systems and the contents that they receive. We're going to need to have age verification and authenticity, authentication of the internet platforms and platform providers that we use and utilise, whether we're a ch child or, we're, as Cara mentioned earlier on, whether we've got ageing people in our families and who have got uh, less than mental capacity. So there's standards coming up around all of those things. But what about governance? We've heard from some of the acts about the governance that we're finding with content moderation. Doesn't that seem a bit too late? And editorial boards for content. With content being made available on any platform, on any, any device, in any communication channel around the globe, anytime, anywhere, any place, in any language, how on earth are we supposed to control it in this post-truth, post-trust digital age we've now entered into? And let's be realistic, we have entered into it, so we have to act wisely. Content, as we know, is made in a variety of different forms. Uh, that's video images, um, in some cases different programming languages, as I said, natural languages, degrees of intelligibility, uh, degrees of encryption that are different. Some are on the dark web, some are on the main web. Um, you know, some are video, some are static, some are memes, some have a double entendre, as we know, you know, they, they intend to be nasty or intend to be nice but can be nasty. These are emojis, there are parody files, audio, visual, written, you name it, it's out there. But because of anonymity, the content that we're looking at doesn't require authorship. It doesn't require authenticity. Um, which that makes it easier for anyone who's on the internet to put out there and post whatever they like, whenever they like, and not be accountable for it. And that also means that those who proliferate this content also don't get to be accountable for it because they don't know who created it. Moderating content is no easy task. Um, I don't know if any of you have tried a, Sunday, a Saturday job or even a Sunday job um, as a content moderator. It's repetitive, it's boring, your image labelling, there's stuff you cannot unsee. And um, with all of that, that that's the human operators, because they have to do the labelling task, because somebody has to label the images that the AIS then have to see. But there's also the content mod bots that are going around, and they are obviously being looked at by these content, content moderators as well. And content moderators are being employed in their droves, but it's not enough when you're given the amount of content that's going out there. So some statistics from Statista as of April of this year. So per minute, we've got 16 million texts are sent. 2.43 million snaps are shared on Snapchat. 1.7 million pieces of content are shared on Facebook alone in one minute. And 347,200 tweets are shared on Twitter. Maybe not quite so many now. Uh, certain owners taken over. Um, let's see what happens. 
But all of this, with people trying to, uh, and moderators and the bots are moderating the content, all efforts to try and minimise this it, disinformation, misinformation, and fake news, and that comes with risks. Risks to people's freedom of speech, people's ability to exercise opinion. Some of this can be undermined, particularly when moderation means being manipulated, muted, and um, being managed because you are being asked, why did you put that content up and why was it like that? So with no further ado, I'm going to just talk about, about this. So far, these legislative measures really have just focused on the content and about why content moderation should be in of itself something we shouldn't perhaps just regulate only. So if some of my panellists could help me here, um, Athena and others, could you please reach behind your chairs and start throwing out some balloons into the audience, on my word, obviously. Audience, it's your time for public participation. Those of you with these on your seats, please stand up. One, two, three. Oh, hang on, there should be two of you on the side. Oh, no, don't throw them out. Yes, Athena, not yet, not yet. Hold back, hold back, you're too eager. You're too eager. <laughs> So, I've only got three of you and two of you on the same row. I'm not really sure how that happened. So, I need one person from over here, willing volunteer, gentleman with a beard. You come on, stand up. You're one of my moderators. Come on. And can I have somebody, lady, young lady here, could you please stand up and be a moderator? Thank you. So, I've got five moderators in the audience in comparison to all of you who are going to push recommend, like, push wind in the direction of a balloon. Make sure these moderators can't get that content. This is content. Now, before I'm going to ask this lovely um, panellist with me to distri uh, distribute these balloons, I want to show you something. This is a balloon. My air is the AIS, the Algorithm Intelligence System. <laughs> this one's working. <laughs> Hang on, they're both working. How are they both working? Ah, oh, which one's not working? That one's not working. So this AIS, that's a duff. So I'm on my algorithmic intelligence ethics board, and I'm making a decision as a participatory governance approach that this algorithm is not a good algorithm for us to use with our content. It won't work. I'm part of a participatory group filling this up with our good positive comments, our expertise, our discipline, our experience. We know what should go into a good algorithm and it's going out there. And this is now going to be part and parcel of all the... Oh, sorry, it's not going far enough. Right, disseminate them, all of them. If they're falling in front of you, pick them up. This is a fun task. Try and make this go. Moderators, your task is to catch them. Catch them. Yeah, it's not fair. Unfair. I have other... My algorithm caught some earlier on, and I've got all these broken, bad content. Keep pushing them, keep pushing them. Where's the content? My goodness, you're not awake. You've not had enough coffee. Right, you're not a moderator. You shouldn't be holding on to it. Keep throwing it. You're not holding on to it. You, you people liking, reinforcing, recommending, get these balloons out. You're not a moderator. Get it out there. Keep throwing it. Honestly, honestly. What are you, students or what? Seriously. Right, come on. Karen, that was you are you moved. You're a you're a static bot. You're a mod bot. You cannot do <laughs> My moderators aren't allowed to move. That's cheating in the meeting. Stay where you are. Stay at your seat. <laughs> oh. Keep, well, because of that, moderator in the green and blue shirt, you need to throw them all away and start again. You've been reset. Your machine learning is going back to basics because you picked the wrong stuff. You chose people's actual speech, maybe some academic opinion. And unfortunately, you weren't supposed to hold on to that, moderator. <laughs> Fantastic. Are you a moderator there? And you've got to... No, there shouldn't be two on the same row. How did you... Somebody nicked a... How did you... Anyway, anyway, you can get the point. There's five of you moderators. How did you get so many as well? Now you've got five moderators. You were obviously not liking enough and recommending enough. 
His hips are... No, fantastic. Well, thank you, moderators. You may now sit down. You've done a very good job. But the point being is... What, thank you. The point being is that... We are trying to tackle this governance problem through individual moderators or mod bots who are trying to collect content and recognise when content's bad or good. Now, I didn't distinguish between bad and good. We could have had some very nasty... I think that purple... I oh, burst that one. No, there's some really other different coloured balloons that could have been really nasty content out there. But we didn't distinguish. And that's the trouble with the way we do moderation. Yes, they're working to an acceptable use policy. Yes, they may well be trying to identify the characteristics, the um, the vectors, all the, the different frames, what does an image look like that looks like bad content? And it's always trying to do that good, bad analysis, but it's not doing an effective job of actually governing. This is where we need organisational structure, not just content, to moderate this problem and to actually oversee, cause it to be accountable for the acts and omissions some of these platform providers actually have in putting the AIS out there that disseminate this content but not only ask us to like it and recommend it, but put it positively back in our faces on our notice boards, bring it to the top of our list. We heard all about that from Noah earlier on. And the trouble is, that kind of moderation governance that we've experienced in the room is just not sustainable. We need to find a different way, of a first line um, of defence, as well as a second line of defence, as well as a third line of defence. I would say the content moderation and the use of mod bots is a second line of defence. Our first line of defence should be here, and I should be with a panel of um, participatory stakeholders who are multidisciplinary, multi-layered, multifaceted, potentially, potentially also multi-jurisdictional, multicultural, people who have experienced these algorithms in anger, who've been harmed by these algorithms, who've benefited from these algorithms, and having a group of people who can participate in ethical governance of an AIS system. And in that way, the idea is we're not then mindlessly trying to image label, recognise good, bad, evil content in an unintelligent, automated way. And we're also then trying to govern the automated dissemination. We're asking the businesses that we're working alongside, the platform providers, to be accountable, be responsible for the algorithmic intelligence systems that they produce, that disseminate this content, how they created the like buttons, how they drive us down into that rabbit hole, how we get manipulated, how we get nudged. You know all the stuff. We've seen it, we've heard it for the last couple of years. And this is where participatory ethical governance really comes through. Because there's only so far an algorithm can take us, and as we heard from Noah earlier on, these are tools. These are tools that can assist us and help us, yes, in identifying bad com content, potentially as a second line of approach. In fact, we've actually got a community of people who are in the platform economy who can also help us to identify good, bad com content, and that's some of our second line of defence. But coming back to that first line of defence, what are the algorithms we're choosing and how are we choosing them? We need a human-centric, outcomes-based, participatory ethical governance within the organisations. And I'm not just saying that they're, they're stakeholders from within the organisation alone. These are multi-stakeholder, as I mentioned earlier on. And whether you call it an ethics advisory board, whether you call it ethics advisory committee, an AI panel, AI advisory board, data ethics board, data advisory panel, there needs to be this governance structure, organisationally, with relevant expertise and experience. And that body needs to be empowered. It needs to have the power to help influence the decisions that are being made by the platform providers who are disseminating this information. That means they need to have real influence over the decisions, whether an algorithm gets used on their social media platform or communications platform. They need to be empowered to say, do you know what, that business strategy, that motivation that led to you to monetize that IAS because you're promoting it, you've got a real-time bidding war going on over content, not just advertising, content that goes to full, because anybody, anytime, anywhere can pay for content to become at the top of your list and be promoted. So if they win that, they're there. So we've got to really question the business strategy. This isn't just about the technology. This isn't about just the business operations. This isn't just about the legal impacts. This is the, so the combination of the socio-technical impacts, the risks and the rewards, the benefits that this has on you, me, our families, our friends, our wider society, our democracies, our, our world, as we're seeing right now and at the moment. 
And we need to take not only a one-stop shop approach of it being one system of interest, one AIS. We need to think about organizationally what's happening. We need to think about the value chain of the AI, both the suppliers who I'm buying in my um, AI as a service or buying in my trained models or buying in my data. I need to interrogate that. I need to be responsible and think about my supply chain down the line in the value chain of AI as well. Who else is contributing to this AIS before it goes out the door, before it's put into service, before it's put into the marketplace and used by a platform provider? So we need to take a whole AI lifecycle approach, but we also need to take an ecosystem approach. Who are the stakeholders that are going to be impacted? And by doing that stakeholder analysis and identifying the kind of stakeholders who may be impacted and influenced and affected by the algorithms I'm producing as an organization and putting out there in the marketplace and deploying on my platforms, by doing that, I can then start to identify who are my multi-stakeholders, who are my multidisciplinary people, who are my multifaceted people, both internal to my organization, because I might have some subject matter expertise within my organization that are the best people for the job because they're at the coal face, like content moderators, for example, or people who are outside my organization, and recognizing that uh, multidisciplinary and expertise and experience isn't just for people who've got letters after their name. Sometimes the most important person is the person who's been impacted by um, a, a, an ED um, content that's gone to them. Maybe sometimes that person is somebody who's had a self-harm content put to them and been affected. Or maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a friend. We need people from all walks of life on these participatory ethical governance boards. And these could be from any variety of backgrounds. And you know, if we're thinking about more expertise, I'm, my background is a lawyer, and now I practice an AI data uh, ethics consultant. We need people with technical expertise, customer relations expertise, service delivery, risk function, philosophers and ethicists, because we talked about them earlier, social scientists, behavioral scientists. We need them all, business people who understand these kind of models that, that this... Um, how we're monetizing AIS within these social media platforms. And we need consumers, we need citizens, and we need SMEs, small, medium-sized enterprise representatives. In short, that multi-stakeholder group needs to be actually part and parcel of public civics, because actually civic engagement and civic participation is the only way we're going to bring that diversity, equity, and equality, and inclusion, and all those diverse voices into that room for governance, for participatory ethical governance, for a trustworthy information age. Because this is all about um, governance, and it is also about that public civic um, participation. And why the public participation? Because we need to help these organizations practice their accountability to be held accountable to you and I. Because without us, without us users, without anyone on their platform, they've no business at all. And we must really remember that. We are their monetization approach. And so to that end, what we need to be thinking about is how do we give them legitimacy? How do we give them a social license to operate? Well, we do that by being part of that public civic engagement, by doing that ethical governance. And why is this all important? Because this is about trust. And it's not a one-time, one-size-fits-all. We can't just look at that, put that in, and say, bye-bye, off you go, AIS. We need to do it on a dynamic basis. We need to have, build feedback loops where we're engaging our participatory ethical governance in whatever shape or means that it actually comes in together to look at that again and again and again and again. Because when we're deploying reinforcement learning, when we're deploying recommender systems, when we're deploying machine learning, these change, these morph, they shift and drift. And they may not continue to be aligned with our original intended purpose of why we put them out there. So it's all about building trust. And to establish trustworthy st structures, we need meaningful human oversight that's empowered, and has the ability to oversee the societal and the ethical and the technical and the legal aspects that concern AIS in this information sharing economy. And it's not just about holding the content and trying to prevent that from proliferating and being disseminated in the way that we are seeing it and we heard about in negative ways this morning, but it's also about holding those platform providers to account. Thank you very much. So what? I want to say, so what? So what all about this? Why participate? Well, if you want to uphold free speech, if you want to hold platforms to account, and because you have a stake in the game, because perhaps you're a user of one of these social media platforms, you are a stakeholder. And whether it's impacting you directly or through your families, we need to calibrate and control the power that is potentially being exerted over us. Not necessarily by the platforms themselves, but the IIS that they're allowing to be deployed. So in conclusion, 
Again, I ask, why are we persisting to try and regulate and govern content when content is only a part of the problem? AIS can produce, recommend, disseminate and delete content in all its guises, written words, spoken word, images, videos, so on, everything we've heard about. And this requires stakeholder engagement to be taken to a whole new level. And I would argue then that needs to be participatory ethical governance for that trustworthy information age. Regulating the content alone does not solve the problem. Platform provi providers need, uh, will be taking the least line of risk approach. So they will want to have a hands-off approach and say, I'm an intermediary, I didn't generate or create that content, I'm just the only one who's proliferating it, proliferating it, proliferating it and disseminating it. But we need to hold them to the highest possible threshold for their accountability. Regulation will be leading the way, but it's coming a bit too late. We need impetus. And in order to get that impetus, there needs to be that the societal mandate. If we haven't got a legislative mandate, we need a societal mandate, and that comes through this participatory ethical governance. Um, trust needs to be earned and constantly reasserted by these content operators. AIS used by content moderate operators needs diverse, equitable and inclusive oversight and governance. And for this to happen, this requires you. This requires all of you to be that next generation of public civics rising up, to be in part and parcel of those ethics boards. And so my argument to you is, are you ready to participate in it? Thank you.